Hi, welcome to the virtual orientation for the 29BH Whitehawk by Jayco. We're going to start orientation on the outside of the RV. And we're going to begin near the front. The first thing that we're going to take a look at is the side marker light here. You may notice that is an extra wide body on it. This is the pre-wired body for a side view camera. And there's one on each side at the front for each side front side marker light. Uh, these can be used in conjunction with a head unit that will allow you to view the sides of your RV while in transit or while stationary from your tow vehicle and can also be used with the rear view camera. These are a separate purchase however it is pre-wired so it makes the install a lot easier. So we'll take a look at your front storage compartment. This is where you will find the lighting or switch for your front running lights. As well as a tire pressure gauge. And we have this folding table. Before we continue to work away along the front, We'll just drop down below your uh, door side storage compartment and see one of four stabilization jacks. They're located at the four corners of the RV and they should never be used to level your RV. They should only be used to snug it up to the ground and stabilize it once you're fully leveled. Depending on the campsite or where it is that you have your RV set up, you may need some additional blocking. Uh, that does not come with the RV, I would recommend 6x6s, uh, usually the easiest and best way to uh, ensure that you always have firm contact with the ground. So when you're uh, camping or parking this somewhere where you don't have very level ground, always make sure that you have blocking so you can still snug it up. Let's continue to work our way along the front. Making note of the battery storage compartment area. And then directly in front of that, we have your double 30 pound bottle propane storage system. We'll make note that uh, we, right now we have the hard cover on. And I thought I would make note of the quick access panel on the top that will give you access to the bottles uh, and the bottle valves. However, for our video, we will take the cover right off. And directly in front of the battery storage, you have your double 30 pound bottle storage, complete or connected with the crossover regulator. What that crossover regulator means or will do for you is that at the moment, you can see that the black handle is pointing towards this 30 pound tank. So initially, the system will draw from this bottle. However, once this bottle gets below a predetermined amount of pressure, and that uh, amount of pressure is determined by the regulator and is not adjustable. Once it reaches the predetermined amount of pressure, the regulator will internally automatically cross over and select from the secondary bottle. That means on the cold nights, you don't have to get out and manually change the bottles over if you have your furnace running. The system will do it for you. Now directly in front of the propane storage, we have your electric tongue jack. We have a nice LED light for loading at night or hitching up at night. We also have electric functioning of the extension or retraction of your jacks. And on the front here, we have a rubber port or stopper that can be removed so that you can utilize the manual tongue jack in order to raise the uh, RV up or down. And as we continue to go along the front of the RV, the next thing that we'll make note of is your safety breakaway switch. It is connected to the tow vehicle via this loop at the front, and then connected to the RV via this pin that goes inside the, the safety breakaway switch housing. In the event that the tow vehicle is separated from the RV, this pin will be pulled free of the housing, thus engaging your trailer brakes. Now I have seen it a time or two 
that during hitch up or hook up you kind of step on this or this gets pulled and it doesn't pull it the pin fully free the housing but just pulls it a little bit and what that will do is possibly still engage the trailer brakes but not make it obvious that they are engaged so if you do notice any symptoms of the uh, trailer brakes being engaged when they're not supposed to I would come and just make sure this pin is fully seated into the housing right next door to that we have your solar panel uh, hookup your solar ready hookup and we continue to make our way along making note of the off door side the side view camera and the side view camera ready uh, housing here continue to make her way we'll make note of your low point drains for your freshwater tank and then continue along the outside have an extra storage compartment here which allows you access to uh, storage underneath the uh, banquette inside and then as we come to the back of the off door side we have a few things here first we'll take talk about your uh, black tank flush important to note that before you hook anything up here always come down here to the output for your black and gray water uh, and you want to make sure that you have your sewer hose and your sewer output connected to the sewage system of the campground or whatever it is that you're dumping once you have done that you have this hooked up to the sewage system pull your black water valve make sure it's open so you've got your output connected to the sewage system you've got your now your black water valve open and then you can come up here connect your garden hose to this connection point and then you can turn on the uh, water from the water source and that will then flush out the black tank and the contents will come out and down into the sewage system but always make sure that the valve is open on the black water tank before you hook that up and start the water or uh, you'll fill up inside the rv there pretty quick so now that we're here we'll just make note of your gray water tank valve handles here here as well as your black water tank in this area we also have the sandy outdoor shower and directly above that we have your city water connection the city water connection is the point at which you connect your rv to the water source whether it be a campground garden hose or the garden hose at home this is how you would connect your rv to a water system so once you have the garden hose connected here you turn the hose on it will pressurize the system and you can then use it much like you would your water system at home continue to make your way along make note of your power cord and the connection point on the outdoor rear portion of the rv this is a 30 amp cord uh, will allow you to connect to a 30 amp uh, receptacle either at the campground or on the outside of your home uh, most of us do not have a 30 amp uh, receptacle on the outside of our home so we do provide you with a uh, 15 amp conversion block that will convert the 30 amp to a 15 amp plug-in um, that will not convert the whole trailer to a 15 amp so you will not be able to run everything namely the uh, ac off that 15 amp receptacle it will uh, most likely just trip the breaker for that uh, for that uh, 15 amp receptacle however it will allow you to run most things lights fridge etc so we give you that uh, that conversion block so you can uh, still have some power connectivity when at home or in the event that campground or rv park just didn't have the site that you needed or wanted for a night and then right next door to that we have your main input for the cable or satellite tv for the rv as we uh, continue along the back 
We'll make note of a few things here. We have the ladder access to the roof, as well as the camera body or camera housing for your rear view camera. Now I did talk about the rear view camera briefly when I made mention of the side view cameras. All three cameras can be purchased together or as a separate system with only the rear view camera. These are an extra purchase. However, the trailer is pre-wired for the rear view and side view cameras. So they are very easy to add to your RV if you would like to do so. And as I mentioned previously, you're capable of monitoring the cameras from either inside the RV while you're moving or while stationary. And it gives you a great view of the RV. We also have this door. And on the back of the RV, this is the first time we've seen these. We're gonna open it up. And it gives us access to the bunk area. So this, what we're looking at here is the bottom bunk. And we have this storage access here. Uh, you can see that we have tie downs. It'd be a good place for, uh, for a bike, as long as it's not too big. Now this does fold up out of the way, providing full access to the storage point from either inside or outside. Continue to make a way around the outside. The next thing that we'll come to is this switch here. This switch will give you your under stair lighting, little night light so you can see your stairs when you're coming home later at night. Very handy. And then we have your outdoor kitchen. We have some storage via the drawers here. We have the outside refrigerator, as well as a water source and lots of lighting to help you prep. And your prep area here. Now the sink isn't a fully functional sink with drain. Kind of like a little splash sink here that you can remove the drain to uh, get rid of the contents once you're done using it. Or you can simply use it right here and have it drain onto the ground, depending on what you're doing. So also in this area, along with the outdoor kitchen, we have your port for your outdoor barbecue or your Blackstone Grill, I believe, is actually what this is for. So you can see that we have this receiver here Underneath the bed, I didn't get it out because we don't have the grills. They're still on back order, but we do have the mount for it. It's pretty straightforward. There's a square uh, hole there. There's a square bar in the under bed storage that slides into there. And then there's simply a top portion that slides into the part that we slide into here. And then the Blackstone grill sits on top. That can be connected to your onboard propane system via this quick connect propane port here and the supplied quick connect hose that comes with the Blackstone grill. So at the moment you can see that this valve for the gas is in the off position. Now it is in the on position. With it in the off you connect the quick connect hose and then connect the other end to the uh, Blackstone grill. Light your grill and you have access to the propane system to do some outdoor cooking as well. Very handy. I'm gonna to continue to move along the outside of the RV and we're pretty much come full circle here. We're out underneath your awning. Make note of the two awning speakers that can be used inside with the RV's stereo system. I will show you more about that in a little bit. And then directly below that, we have the venting for your range hood. Uh, when traveling, it's always important that these tabs are locked in. However, when you're going to use the uh, rain shed, it's always a good idea to pop those tabs up. And then you can see that this will flap and allow venting to take place. So also underneath the awning here, we have the outside access point to refrigerator. 
Now this is more than just an outside access point, however. It is also venting. So it's important that this remains obstruction free at all times as maximum airflow is needed through this vent, these vents in order for uh, your refrigerator to operate properly. Now directly below that we have the exhaust for your furnace. I think it probably goes without saying and it does say it right on here that this is hot. I just like to make note of it when it's underneath the awning as there's a better chance that uh, people could come in contact with it, namely children. So just be aware that it does get hot enough that uh, you'd want to avoid uh, any kids touching that. Next we'll come to your uh, potable water fill point or your fresh water tank fill point. It's important to note that this fill point is what you'll use when you want to fill your fresh tank. So your fresh water tank is something that you would utilize if you are camping somewhere that doesn't have a water supply or you can use it if you're camping somewhere that maybe has a water supply but it's not a potable water supply. You could fill the uh, tank before you leave home with potable water and then use the onboard water pump to draw from it and pressurize the system on board. You can see that we have a mounting bracket for a television along with output for your cable or satellite as well as 120 volt power supply. One of the last things we'll talk about is the outside access to your hot water heater. Important things to note here, your drain plug and anode rod, your pressure relief valve, and your reset right there. Before removing this drain plug, always make sure you open the pressure relief valve to relieve pressure in the tank. Uh, if you do not, this, uh, this plug will come shooting out uh, like a rocket. I'd get out of the way. Okay, I think that does it for the outside. Let's take our show inside and see what it is that we can see. First thing as we step through the door, we'll make note of the unit's fire extinguisher. It's always handy to know where all the safety equipment is. You never want to use it, but if you do, then you, uh, you know where to quickly find it. I like the position right inside the door. You can use it outside with the barbecue or you can use it inside if you're cooking indoors. Right beside that, we have your carbon monoxide propane gas alarm. You can see that there's a green light on here. If that green light is on and solid and it's not making any noise, then your system is protecting you as it should. It's important to test this every so often. And to do so, you would press this button right above the uh, green light you'll hear a series of loud beeps and then the light will go from a solid green and to flash red and then once it's done it'll be quiet and go back to a solid green. The easiest way to remember to uh, test this is to do it along with your smoke detector. It's usually recommended that your smoke detector is tested and the batteries replaced during daylight savings time or at least when we change the clocks so I always suggest that we just do the same with your carbon monoxide propane alarm. Also in this area, you can see that we have your GFCI for the unit. You will see that when this is tripped, a red light comes on here. That would indicate that anything on the load side of the GFCI plug will not be functioning. Uh, some symptoms you may notice would be outside plugs not working, any plugs around water, sink, bathroom, anything like that should not be working in this instance. If we took a tester and hooked it up to these plugs here, these plugs would not be functional as they are part of the load side of the GFCI. So if we go back and press this reset, then these plugs will now be functional. Also just inside the door, we have the main switching for your living room lights, security lights and awning lights. We also have switching to switch you between your fireplace and your water heater on electric. The reason why we have to do this is that this is only a 30 amp supply and that 30 amps isn't enough to power both your water heater and your fireplace along with everything else. Also in this area we have a, your J command system, 
Um, I'm not going to go into every detail about this. I'm going to describe the functionality and how to move around in it and go into some detail over specific things. So first we'll note that we have this button here. That button is what you use to switch you between screens. So right now we're on the motor screen, which will allow you to run the awning or the slide. And to get to the next screen, we press this button and it cycles us through all the different screens. And now you can see we've come back to the beginning where we started. Now to move within a screen, we hit the button below, the select button, and that'll cycle us through whatever options we might have. And when we're on the option that we want, we can then go over here and use these buttons to do a certain action for this option. So for instance, for the slide, we've picked the option of the slide and the actions that we can perform are extension or retraction. And the same can be said for the AC main. We can go through all the options here, the fan, furnace, or just off, but this is where you go to to get to your uh, furnace or your AC settings. And then we have this section here pairing your device. So in this section, this is where you would go ahead and pair your phone to, to the trailer. And that way you can walk around, put out slides and start the water here, do everything from your phone so you can be out walking around and doing these things. So if I go ahead and say, okay, pair this device, it's going to try to pair. It won't work. I don't have my phone with me. I don't have a phone ready to pair. So you need the app on your phone. It's a J command app, whether you have Android or Apple, you can get the J command app. Once you have the J command app, there's very clear instructions. When you open it up, it will walk you through what to do and then you will come to this screen here with the pair device, click OK, and then follow the instructions on the app on your phone. Uh, there's also some uh, kind of shortcuts here. This one does all the lights in the RV. This one will take you right to the water pump menu. There it is. And if you want the water pump on, you can see it's on water pump. And then just click OK to start it as well as the furnace and temperature and stuff. We have uh, a few little quick connector uh, shortcut options. So as we turn, we'll take a look at your bunk system. We have this ladder to give you access to the top bunk, which is handy. And the inside will show you, we have access to that storage point right here. And we also have this cargo netting that is removable. This portion here locks into place via here. Step into your bathroom, making note of your shower and a nice high window placement, which is nice for the bathroom. Adds lots of extra light, but maintains privacy. And then you'll see that we have controls for all your lights. We have a night light behind the mirror here, as well as the main lights of the RV. As we step in to the kitchen area and main area of the RV, we'll note your stove. And the very first thing that I did when I came up to this range shop or stove was to open the glass. Never light this with the glass closed or the glass down. Always have it up. I would also, uh, when you're using the oven, I would probably also open it just in case. It does get a little bit of heat through the venting at the back. In order to light this, you'll turn the valve handle to the light position and then turn the sparking knob and it'll automatically light your burner. You can do the same thing for all three. Your oven here functions pretty much the same way. And again, I don't know if you noticed, before I went to light this, I just automatically opened the oven door. Never light it with it closed. That just allows pressure to build up in gas if it doesn't light right away. And gas under pressure uh, ignited is probably not a good thing. So always open this, leave it open, turn it to the light position, 
In order to light the stove, the only difference is you have to press and hold the knob in when you turn that sparking knob. Now we're going to squat down here and take a look. We had this stuff fall out at us. That's not because something's broken. I undid that ahead of time to give us access underneath the sink here. Two Red Robertson screws removed and that gives us access underneath your sink to the water pump in the inside portion of your water heater. So what we want to make note on for your water heater is the valve handle positions. At the moment, these valve handles are pointing in towards the tank, there and there. What that means is the water flow will be directed through the tank. Uh, however, if you're winterizing, you do not want your uh, antifreeze to fill the, the tank as it's not needed. So we will turn these valves so they run in line this way. That goes around the loop. Now both valve handles need to be turned, that one and that one up top here. So turn these two valve handles the opposite direction that they are now. That's for winterizing. That allows the antifreeze to go through all the plumbing of the RV but does not go through your water tank as it's not needed. Also in this area we have your water pump. That's this right here. On your water pump you have this valve right here in the current position it is set to draw from your freshwater tank which is what you want when you're utilizing your RV however as far as winterizing goes the way that you winterize or get the antifreeze in to the system is through this fill tube right here so in order to winterize we have to change this valve handle position now we'll be utilizing this fill tube which we can put in a jug of antifreeze and pressurize the system with the antifreeze. Continue through, making note of your emergency exit. In order to utilize the emergency exit, we'll push down on the black tab, push the red handle over and out. Once this handle is perpendicular with the wall of the RV, we can push the handle fully out of the window. Once that's fully out, we can grab this red tab, remove the screen, and you can escape to safety. As we turn around 180 degrees here, we're looking at your refrigerator. This will operate in three modes. It'll operate in an auto mode, which will choose between uh, electricity and propane automatically, always selecting electricity if it's present. We have an electricity only mode, and then we have a propane only mode. Now in the event that the system does not light under propane, you'll see that the green light that was here will actually switch colors, it'll flash to indicate that there is an issue lighting. Generally speaking, the main issue that tends to happen, especially in new, new RVs or with people who haven't had one before, you don't really understand the idea that, uh, that the pressure in the lines as far as the gas goes can make this a little bit more difficult to light. So a lot of times what happens, the first thing you do is you try to turn your fridge on and either you don't have the valves open for the propane out front or they're open but you've just opened them and there hasn't been enough pressure built up in the lines with gas and there's a lot of air in the lines. So you may hear it try to light but then when you come back in you'll see that there's different lights on the front here other than green to indicate that you had an issue. I would go out, turn it off, and then maybe, and this is what I would recommend, try lighting the top burner first. It's a good way to purge a lot of air out of the system. And once you've done that, these are much, much easier to light. Any other appliance lights much better, usually first time, because you've purged the majority of the air out of the system already. They're almost directly below the refrigerator. We have the load center for the RV. This is where you will find the breakers much like you'd see in your house and your fuses much like you'd see in your vehicle and they operate pretty much the same. One neat feature here is there's a red LED light that goes along beside the circuit that will come on to indicate that there is an issue with an individual circuit. If we swing just to your left 
we will see your fireplace. Now we had mentioned earlier that in order to use the water heater on electric or the fireplace, you had to choose one or the other. You can't do both. So just be aware of that. If one of them isn't working, go over and take a look at that switch on the wall and make sure that it isn't just that that switch is flipped to the, to the other appliance. Take a minute to talk about your onboard stereo. We would mentioned the speakers under the awning earlier. And if we look at this stereo, you can see there's a zone one and a zone two. Zone one will be the speakers inside the RV and zone two will operate the speakers under your awning. As well as the dual zone system, the stereo also has Bluetooth and HDMI connectivity, as well as an auxiliary port or function and USB charging. Before we move on from this area, I want to make note of your antenna booster right here. At the moment it is off, and if you wish to uh, use your satellite or cable, it is important to have this signal booster off, as if it's on it will affect the signal to your receiver. So if you can see there, that green light is now on right there, that would indicate the signal booster is on. So if you're having issues with connectivity to your cable or satellite, come here, look for that signal booster button and try pressing it to see if that is perhaps the issue that you're having. Step into the bedroom here. I have lots of light with that front window. There's also a nice blind to cover that front window so you're not woken up too early in the morning. But it is a nice feature. I don't know if you can imagine sitting uh, at a campsite overlooking the ocean or a mountain or something with that window right there. That would be pretty fantastic. So let's take a minute to talk about this emergency exit. Just more or less to point out that it exists. It is here inside the bedroom. It functions in the exact same way that the one does that we showed you out in the main area of the RV. As we're sitting here, We'll make note of the bedside light, as well as USB charging ports and 120 volt power accessible right beside the bed. When we were doing the orientation of the outside of the RV, I mentioned the pre-wired hookup location for your solar panels. This would be the location for the head unit for your solar system. It has the cutout location for the head unit and the wires uh, to connect to the head unit should be behind the wall right here, making it very easy to fully connect your system to solar. Also on this wall of the bedroom, you can see that we have a mounting location for a television bracket, not included, but the location is provided, which is handy, as well as 120 volt power and the output for your cable or satellite system. Like the other side of the bed, this side of the bed has USB charging as well as a night light and 120 volt power. The under bed storage has assistance via prop so that you don't have to try to hold the bed up while you're trying to get stuff in or out. Now we will make note of a few items that are here. We have your spray nozzle here that can be used in conjunction with your outdoor tap in the outdoor kitchen and we also have the receiver or the receiver post for your blackstone grill as well as the the top that the grill sits on here i did go into a bit of detail to describe how that worked and the quick connect propane hose is attached this is also where you will make note of and see that we have your manual crank for your electric tongue jack and the manual crank for your stabilization jacks. One of the last things that we'll make mention of before we let you go on your way here would be the AC system. You will note that on the uh, unit in the ceiling here we have this baffling. With these baffles open, the majority of the cool air will fall right here. However, with them closed, the majority of the cool air will be pushed 
to these ports located throughout the RV. Thank you for your attention. I hope you found it informative and useful. I do apologize if there's anything that you were hoping to hear me cover and I did not. If that's the case though, please don't hesitate to give us a call and we will do our best to answer all of your questions and make sure you're comfortable before you use your RV for the first time. Thank you.